is going on everyone welcome back to another stratus video where today we're going to be covering on how to make some of the sounds that you hear in Flume's palaces um, some of these sounds are very interesting and very unique to palaces and uh, due to my kind of uh, interest in Flume I've spent a lot of time trying to like figure out kind of how Flume makes these sounds so I have uh, quite a few tips on how to make uh, very similar sounds to what you hear on palaces so uh, make sure you drop a like, and if you want to see more Stratus content, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and we're going to get into the video. So the first sound we have is the Flume 808, and you hear this a lot on Get You. Uh, Get You is like one of those those tracks where it's just like, kind of like Amber or um, Wallfuck, where it's just like, just beefy basses. Um, and yeah, so this is what it sounds like. You can kind of hear maybe some similarities there. It mostly has to do with phasing of sine waves and stuff, which is pretty interesting. So uh, I'm going to show you how to make it. So when it comes to making this sound, there's a few different techniques that you can use. Um, and I'll show you both of them. So the first one is just using a couple of sine waves. So we go to analog and we go basic shapes. And uh, you can also do it with two oscillators, which is um, preferable at least for me. So yeah, basic shapes. And then it's kind of weird. You don't usually do this for basses, um, at least for 808s, but you want to turn the unison pretty much all the way up and then turn this, uh, this blend so they're pretty much all equal here. And then uh, typical for 808s, you want to just make this LFO, set it to envelope, coarse pitch, coarse pitch, put it on the level here, and then similarly on the level here. Now, this one right here, this oscillator is going to be responsible for the phasiness. And then this oscillator right here is going to be our main kind of sound. So we want to leave this with a little bit more volume and this with a little bit less volume. That way we can make sure that, you know, we, we, we get the full power of the 808 without losing um, the harmonics and whatnot. So then you just distort it all the way and then you put a multiband compressor on it. Drop them down two octaves. That's going to make it sound a lot better. So now that you uh, play the note, you can hear that. And if, even if you look at the, the, the scope up here, you can see how those harmonics shift around. And you can change the amount that does that by, by changing the detune here. So if you don't want any of that detune, you make it like completely, completely not detuned. But if you want it to just go all over the place, bring that detune up there you go that's kind of the basis of of how you do it and then for post-processing and stuff usually what i like to do is just take a limiter and then keep that ceiling kind of where it is and then i have this limiter with a uh, zero sustain zero release and zero attack so that's going to make it a hard clipper and then you can kind of mess around with it with uh, your uh your EQ here, and it's going to limit it. So if we look at the, the EQ afterwards, it's going to be relatively level. That's really uh, kind of like the fundamental to making flume type tracks and flume music is mess around with stuff. See what sounds good. You have those just weird harmonics going on. Really, uh, just mess around with sine waves, phasing and whatnot. Uh, what you can also do is turn on flanger. And just, you know, just mess around with things. You know, uh, hyperdimension can also be cool. Like those really screechy uh, things on the, the stereo. You know, it just like really odd sounds that you wouldn't usually like prefer, but that's kind of what Flume does. It's just like, that's a weird sound. I like that. I'm going to use it. I know a lot of people want to know the secrets to Flume's disrespectful acid drums because those snares be slapping. I don't even know how to describe it properly. Like these are very tonal. Ton tonality is the biggest key to making a, a Flume snare. So um, I guess we can, we can really start from anywhere. Uh, you don't need a snare sample to even start, but I just wanted to show those as some examples. So what we're going to actually do is use Serum. You can do it with anything. In fact, I think I want to do most of it with post-processing. So this is all I'm going to do. 
this is going to be our sample that we start out with. We can just drag that over here. That doesn't sound very tonal. It doesn't sound very much like a snare. But you, just you wait. Just you wait. Patient asthma. Anyways. So if we clip this, can start to hear a little bit of snare. Like, it looks kind of very similar to a snare. And you want to make sure that you are not having the high end this loud. Because uh, white noise has a lot, a lot of treble. But snares usually have high mids, like so. Uh, and then always limit your snares so they're not clipping in the master track. You want them, you want them to clip, but you don't want them to clip in your master. You want them to clip in their individual mixing things. So put a limiter, change the uh, sustain, release, and attack all the way down, and that's going to just turn it into a hard clipper. Uh, and then what we can do is add some tonality, just adding a, a peak like that. That's pretty much what you have to do. Like that. And then we can also use soft clippers sometimes. So soft clippers can be good. Uh, and this will limit the shit out of it. And then we can consolidate this. So uh, we have basically the... Uh, same same kind of snare here then we can put it on a new track and then we can further like post process it so you can see here this is a long ass snare uh what we can do is you know we can stretch it that might work and then maybe like pitch it down stretch it like so like that that sounds good and then we can eq it again just so we have less of that like laziness And then we can add some some reverb here. And uh, sometimes you'll hear that like combs filterness uh, if you turn the diff all the way up, and that's just gonna cause like the amount of bounces around. So if you turn that down, it's not gonna combs filter as well because basically what a reverb is is just a really short delay. So the more times you introduce this delay, the more phasing that's gonna happen. Therefore, the more combing you're going to receive. So what you got to do instead is just turn the diff down. That's going to change the amount of bounces to like five. So there you go. Now you have kind of a, a, a nice little a nice little snare. So we're going to consolidate this again. And there you go. Now you kind of have a flume snare. And what you can also do is kind of layer it. Like that's a good one to layer with and maybe pitch it down a little bit. And then uh, and I would recommend doing this if you're going to do this on yourself, uh, for your own songs and stuff. Do this in a separate project file. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is kind of simulate what uh, the sound might sound like. So we're going we're gonna to just drop a, a kick and a snare in here. And then make it a little bit faster. So there we go. We have some disrespectful ass drums. But that's not all. There's more. So uh, what you'll hear a lot in Flume's stuff is uh, is kind of like these like weird pre-snare things and these weird like post-snare things. And I can show you an example of, of kind of what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not going to play Flume's music because I don't want to get copyrighted, but I'll play you uh, a little track that I've been working on. Pay uh, special attention to the, the snares here. <laughs> So you can hear those like really powerful like pre snares and like the clanginess of them, and that's uh that's done with using this little cool thing called RM. I don't even know what it does to be completely honest, because I rarely use RM. Uh, but it's a it's in a pre computed effects thing on uh um on FL. If you're using Ableton, guessing it's probably in the operator, uh, but I don't know because I don't use Ableton. But wherever you can find it. So basically what RM is, is, it'll just add tonality to it. Like that. So you can hear that like, just like really clanginess. What we can do is, is we can add uh, some RM mix to it. Uh, 
Uh, and then for the pre-snares, it's very similar. Uh, you want to make sure you take out most of this transient here because the transient should hit on the actual snare and then like the pre-snare should sound more like that. So uh, for the pre-snare, uh, just like change these, change the pitch, the RM, and the frequency. And then you get something like that. Uh, and then you can also do it the opposite way. You can also add this reverb here. Stereo delay. And then uh, for every like snare hit, you want to like just edit the settings a little bit. Like that. And then for like the post snares, sometimes you'll have like a, another snare come in that's just like very clangy. Uh, and that might only hit uh, sometimes. So you can just stretch it out and then repitch it. And then like go like that. And then pitch it around maybe. Change these effects. Like that. And there you go. You have some clangy ass, disrespectful ass snares. There you go. Easy. Disrespectful drums. Just had some samples in there. Boom. He got a flume song. There you go. The next thing is the risers. So you'll hear this on Highest Mountain, kind of near the end of the song, and On a Mountain. Uh, on a Mountain isn't from Palaces, but Danny L. Harrell, I think is his name, worked on On a Mountain and worked on some tracks with Flume on Palaces. If you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you listen to the songs. I'm not going to play them because I don't want to get copyrighted once again. This is how it's made. So what you got to do is just activate noise like so, and then you put a phaser on it and you turn the rate down and you turn the frequency uh, down like that and then um, you set this to like maybe like t uh, four bars or so and then depth all the way up feed all the way up kinda like that and then what you can do is set this to like one fourth and then change this Kind of like that. And then uh, since it's a riser, uh, we want to kind of solo the high end. Like that. And then if you want it mono, turn this face to 360 or zero, whatever. And that's kind of what you can do. Uh, you can also compress it because some of those sounds are kind of peaky. And then maybe uh, EQ post or pre. Uh, you can also add my like, chorus. Like so. So uh, you, like you'll hear this in the background of some songs as well. So uh, I'll play you another kind of example of, of where this might be used. <laughs> So you can kind of hear it, it just fills in that background and adds some tension to the drop. It's just like that dun 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 dun. Okay, so another trick that Flume does a lot is kind of like using pads as uh, like a synth almost. So like if I take a pad here, I'm gonna grab something from my Convolver Pads pack. Yeah, so like, let's just use this. So that sounds pretty good. And we're just gonna cut basically a little chunk out of it. Uh, you know, there's no minimum or maximum that you need, but I like to do four just so I can make, you know, like a little pattern. What you can do is kind of just repeat them. Like that. And then sometimes you, you know, you might want to do it four times or eight times. I kind of like the idea of having like a one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, one. Yeah, so. I want to have this one here and then have this one here. C 
so you can kind of hear that creates a nice little pattern and then um, uh, they, you want to like be able to post process them all on the same track so make sure you put that on a track there and then we have a lot of low end. Sometimes I like to like add a phaser. Phasers are always cool. Uh, I like to change the frequency to like zero. And then we can add some disrespectful drums, I guess. Uh, so I'll do that real quick just to show you kind of what it's all about. So in typical flume fashion, I've kind of disorganized some of the drums like so. So they're a little bit off of time. Uh, and that's something that you'll see a lot in flume music, just making things a little bit off time to make them sound a little bit more natural. Uh, and then, yeah, so this is what it sounds like with the drums 808 and the pad. So there you go. Uh, you got a little idea going. So yeah, I hope you found any of these uh, techniques interesting. Uh, so make sure you drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more Stratus content. So I'll see you in the next video.